humming. So thank you for doing that recording. So this is our budget for the for the fiscal year. So our main sources of income are from the auction and the enrichment fund and PTO memberships. So just a quick understanding of the way the auction works. So a lot of the auction money is a pass through. Like last year, we raised sixty thousand dollars for Chris One Eighty, which is our fund the need, and so that goes directly to that program. So whatever is left after that remaining amount is shared with the DHAA, the Athletic Association, 50-50. So they get half, we get half. Um, and then as you see, we have some other sources of income, including the Enrichment Fund. We have some Spirit Nights that you've all supported and things like that. Then for our expenses, our biggest outlay, we have auction expenses, of course, but our, what we're really here about are the teacher grants. So that's where you'll see was one of our biggest line items, line items is for this year. I am um, not the treasurer. I'm presenting this for Drew Schuler, who couldn't be here tonight. So if I'm not as um, up on everything, that's I can answer questions later. But I think it's pretty self-explanatory. We obviously try and return as much money to the um, school as possible. And for teacher grants, we did up our money for that this year because during the pandemic, a lot of things that normally would happen, like helping to pay for bus rides for kids to go to um, like Model UN or debate or any of those type of events. So a lot of those things weren't happening. So we're expecting that that's gonna ramp up again this year as things ease. So we're expecting we're getting, we'll be getting more grant requests. Um, we try and keep our operating costs very low, of course, and I think they are pretty low. So you can see what those are there. And then we also absorbed um, some ex new expenses this year, which was the Red Devil Task Force, which helped, has been helping to clean up the campus. As you've seen, they were working over the summer and there'll be more of those work days coming this year for parents to join on Saturday. So we added some money for them this year as well to help reimburse for some of those uh, materials that had to be used to help um, beautify the campus and beautify the school. Does anyone have any questions at this point? Um, you can probably put them in the chat if you have any questions. We'll try and keep all of that so that way we don't have to worry about people talking over each other. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Okay, I am not seeing any questions. Are we ready to take a vote then? Okay, I'm just making one last check for questions. Okay, do we vote to, I make a motion to approve the DHHS PTO budget for fiscal year 22-23. Oh, thank you, Melanie, for making the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> See, I'm seeing raised hands. Things in the chat. Aye. Aye. There are three eyes in the chat. Okay. I'm looking to see if I see raised hands on the screens. Let me stop sharing. Is it okay to stop sharing so you can yeah, see better? Yeah, stop sharing. Okay. You can see I'm getting more eyes in the chat. Two more in the chat. Three. <laughs> okay. I think we're probably good then. Okay. Motion to approve the budget is passed. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Um, so in addition to getting some questions for Chris 180, we did receive some questions from parents about a few other items. There's a few we're going to answer here and then a few that we are going to, that Mr. Joyner is going to answer through email. So just so you know, they will be answered that way if we do not address it here. Um, one of them is about how to, how a parent can help support the PTO. And there is a link about volunteering on our website. 
And if you go to that link, there are a number of um, different events that we help with throughout the year and ways to volunteer. So please take a look at that. There are many, many ways to get involved and, and we appreciate all the support. So thank you for offering to volunteer. Um, and then there was a question about after school clubs. And those are, there's two ways you could find those. One is on the Red Devil Day website where all the clubs that participated um, put their information there so you can find it there. There's also a list of clubs on the high school website as well. If you can navigate, I think it's on the left bar, you can get to the school clubs. So there's a, there's a couple ways to find out about those. Um, so I think as the rest of the questions, uh, Mr. Joyner will answer by email. So that leaves us to getting started with Chris 180. And we have Africa Hamilton here, who is our counselor. Is that the correct title for our high uh, school? Therapist or counselor, that's fine. I just don't want parents to get it confused with the counselors that are already at the school. Right. Yes, Good so point. I'm a therapist is the official title. Okay. Yes. So I know a number of you sending questions and some of those will be answered during the presentation. Mm -hmm. So we will go through that first and then we will use the chat to ask additional questions. And I also have the other questions you, ask, you asked. So any that aren't answered through the presentation, I will ask um, Africa some of those as we're going through. And then like I said, if you have additional ones, please use the chat and we can do it that way. Yes, give me one second, I'm trying to share my screen. All right, can you all see this? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's not in presentation mode, but yes. Okay. Is it in presentation mode now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you all. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Just wanted to say I am more than thrilled to be at Drill Hills. I am so, so happy that you all kind of raised the money just to have me and provide those type of services for students here at Drill Hills High School. Um, just a little bit about myself. Like they said, my name is Africa Hamilton. Um, I was born and raised in Macon, Georgia. For those that know where that is, that's a little bit about an hour and a half um, away from south of Atlanta. Um, I graduated from Mercy University undergrad in psychology, and then I went to Georgia State um, and got my school counseling degree. So I worked as a school counselor for about four years in Macon and Bibb County in a middle school. Um, and just some interesting facts about me. I really, really love art. So outside of being a therapist, I'm an artist. Um, I do a lot of like commission art pieces, paintings. Um, I also do murals. I do painting parties, different things of that nature. Um, I also am taking some classes to get certified in art therapy. So that's something cool that I'm on the track of doing. Um, and then just a quote that I live by, um, by Maya Angelou. People will oftentimes forget what you said. People will often sometimes forget what you did, but people will never forget how you make them feel. So that is a little bit about me. So just kind of jumping into Chris 180. So Chris is actually an acronym um, of our organization, which stands for Creativity, Honor, Respect, Integrity, integrity and Safety. Um, so that's some of the things that we live by within Chris 180. Um, our mission is to heal children strengthen families and build communities. And then just some of the things that we do uh, here at Chris 180, we help children, adults, and families uh, who have experienced trauma, change in directions of their lives to become more productive, self-sufficient members of the community. We do this through mental health counseling, training, providing safe housing, and real world skill building. So within Chris 180, the school-based department is just one of the many departments that Chris 180 has. So alongside of the uh, school-based, you know, pretty much counseling departments, we also have counseling centers. Um, you will see, I wish I could show you, but you would see like the red um, pretty much blocks. Those are different Chris counseling locations that we have around the Metro Atlanta area. And we have one actually in DeKalb County. Um, our main office, which is, you will see, is found as the circle. So within our main office, we have different centers. We have the Center of Excellence. We also have a wraparound services. We have the Counseling Center. We have a health clinic. 
we have a Summit Trails Apartments, which is apartments um, for young adults um, and the homeless. And then we also have a drop-in center. Our drop-in center, um, we have about five to six drop-in centers around the area of Atlanta. Um, and those are called the Act Promise Centers. And those are for, stu uh, not students, I'm sorry, clients who are experienced homelessness or just kind of want to come in and kick it and just hang out. I know the one that um, is located near our main office, they have a studio, they have a place where they're able to pick up clothing. We have a food shelter, different things of that nature. Um, we also have a variety of foster homes within the Atlanta area, and then a variety of gateway foster homes as well. So just kind of getting back to the school-based department, these are a few things that I'm able to service um, within Druid Hills High School. So when I, when I do get clients, I, I have about five now currently on my caseload. So I provide individual and family counseling to those particular clients. Um, I also am able to do small group counseling, which I am in the works of working with um, the 504 coordinator and Ms. Brown to identify some students for an anxiety group. So I'll have about 10 students meeting with them every other week. Um, and we'll just kind of go over some um, preventative measures and different things of that nature um, when, it, when it pertains to anxiety. And I also do staff training. So I hosted my first staff training last Wednesday and these will be continuing once a month um, every first Wednesday. I'll pretty much be doing uh, trainings on self-care, um, staff trauma, different things of that nature just so the staff feel supported um, when it comes to working with students who may suffer from mental illness. And then um, I'm also able to do workshops such as this one um, and different things of that nature. I'm also able to sit in on 504 meetings, IEP meetings, and help pretty much bring out resources to the school. So anything that pretty much helps students, helps teachers, helps parents, I'm able to do it within the school. So when it comes to individual clients, these are some of the things that I'm able to help with. Um, a lot of times, especially in high school, one of the, the top two biggest things that I am seeing is anxiety and depression, but I'm also able to help with um, ADHD, grief and loss, bullying, trauma, and then just cha other challenging behaviors. So this is kind of the referral um, system. So for a student to get referred to me, it that student would have to have been through um, all the other kind of like tiers of support. So as you would see in the gray, the first tier of support would be pretty much like a parent concern or teacher involvement. And then the second layer of support would be going to their school counselor or just kind of a school social worker intervention. And then once the school social, the school social worker or school counselor see okay, we have kind of used all of our resources um, for this student, then they may potentially make a referral to me. So within that, this is our referral process broken down. So similar to kind of what I said before in the previous slide, um, the teacher kind of will notice, hey, little Johnny, you know, may need some additional support. Um, and then the teacher may give interventions, um, additional school support, and then the point person is Ms. Uh, Brown, which is the head counselor at Druid Hills. So all of the referrals will filter in through Ms. Brown. So the parent can make a request, teachers can make a request, and also students can make a request for themselves. So once a, a referral or request have been made, it is sent to Ms. Brown. And then within that, Ms. Brown will pretty much verify the appropriateness for the referral. So I meet with Ms. Brown at least once a week for about an hour, and we kind of sit through and go through different referrals or potential referrals of students that um, she think that may need a referral, and we go from there. So it's kind of a joint process um, between her and myself. Um, and then so once we see that a student is eligible to be referred to me, the parent or we fill out a referral form, um, and then we receive permission pretty much from the parent. And then the form is sent to our care team. Our care team at Chris 180 checks their insurance. Um, and the cool thing with school-based that we don't want, even if a student or a family don't necessarily have insurance, we usually still are able to see them through a grant that we are under. 
So um, a lot of times, you know, we are able to take a lot of insurance, but for instance, if a student or a family don't have insurance, we still are able to see them. So I don't want families or parents to get alarmed by that. And then once um, the care team does insurance check and everything is sent over and it's, I get the clear, I pretty much do a BHA and an intake assessment, which is a behavioral health assessment. And then that's when I start um, therapy pretty much. So I do an individual family, I do individual sessions once a week, and then I do family sessions once a month. So these are some of the questions and just recap of uh, some of the things that I've already talked about. And like Ms. Valerie said, if you have any additional questions, once I answer these, put them in the chat and then I'll go, we'll, we'll go through and then we'll answer them, okay? So the first one was, how can I refer my child to a therapist? Similar to what I was saying, just our referral process. So if you um, are or want your child to come to me for therapy, you will go to Ms. Brown first and she will fill out a referral form. Um, what services are offered? So just to recap, I offer individual services, family services, and then I also do small groups. I also do teacher uh, forums or teacher trainings. And then I also do parent forums or parent trainings. And then how often can my child meet with a counselor? So once I do an intake assessment, I pretty much um, gauge to see how, how often that child or my client needs assistance. So on a regular basis, it's usually once a month. So four times, not once a month, sorry, once a week. So on average, it's about four times a month that I will see that child. Um, what information can be shared with the parents? So I am a licensed therapist and my client will essentially be your child or that student. So the three things that I always tell parents is I can't necessarily share something that is shared within therapy unless that child or my client wants to hurt themselves hurt someone else, or if someone is trying to hurt them. Um, and then I also kind of give a fourth one. I often, if it's something that I feel as if a parent needs to know and I necessarily can't share it, I will often encourage my client to share that with their parents um, once we have our family sessions. So those are kind of three times that I'm able to share with a parent. And then I oftentimes encourage my client to talk to their parents about something that I feel like the parents should know. Um, what time can students meet with a counselor or therapist or myself? Um, I usually try to pull them, and I often, do, when I do the intake assessment, I ask the preferred time or class that they want to be pulled out of. But the good thing about just being in a school, I'm able to see them during the school hours. So you don't necessarily have to bring them to an office. Um, or if that week, if they do need an additional um, session, I am able to do telehealth via Zoom. When they're Oh, I think I put that in wrong. But will there be any student groups? Similar to what I was saying was I'm doing an anxiety group starting at the end of September, early October. So there will be groups for future students. Um, if you are interested, like I said, send that email to Ms. Brown and then she'll get your name on the list or get your student's name on the list. And then how confidential is therapy? What teachers know? So going back to what I was saying is very confidential. Um, and I usually don't tell anyone anything outside of those three things. When it comes to teachers within our intake process, a release of information form is signed by parents, um, but it is case by case. One thing that I love and what one thing that I kind of tell parents is similar to school counseling. Um, so teachers are with our you know kids majority of the time. So they may see a lot of the behavior that I might not get from that one hour um, once a week. So I tend to go to teachers a lot to kind of see, not necessarily telling them everything that is talked about, but I do like to include a wraparound model when I'm counseling a student or a client. But if a parent do not want me to talk to a teacher, they don't have to sign the release of information, but that would go for the entire school. So not only teachers, I wouldn't be able to talk to um, Mr. Joyner or the other school counselor. So that's something that we could talk about when we do do the intake process. So, so you all will know more about that process. So those are all the questions um, that I got beforehand. Are there any other questions? And I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Yeah, so we just, there were a couple new ones that came in. And then we also have one in the chat right now that is what kind of parent workshops can you offer? Okay, give me one second. I'm sorry, I'm not tech savvy at all. Okay. 
So I'm able to do pretty much like um, anything that is a parent need. So anything that y'all identify as a need um, for parents who want to know, I often do coaching. So anything as far as like trauma um, to look out for within your child, um, tips and tricks of how to identify mental health, um, ways to um, communicate with our children better, um, different things of that nature. So I'm pretty open and, and able to do any type of training with parents, depending on the needs of what's going on. And just following up on that, how would a parent go about suggesting that to, or asking about that? Do they they reach out to Carla Brown for that as well? Or Yes. So you okay. can reach out to Carla Brown and then I should have kept going. Um, I could provide my email within the chat. So you also can send me an email as well. And then Ms. Valerie, I know you have been very good at putting all of this together. I was going to say they can also reach out to you as well. And you have my email. So you can email me um, some of the parent needs or the things that they want uh, to be trained on and presented to, but I'll go ahead and put my email in the chat. Um, okay. There were a couple other things. I think we answered that. There was a question, how many students can you handle? Are we already at capacity? That is a great question. No, we're not at capacity. Um, one thing about having new partnerships is that, you know, just the referrals are coming in a little bit slower. So I'm up to about six students currently, um, and I can have up to 25, depending on the severity of each case. So like I said, I'm able to see students once a week. Um, so if I have students who I see religiously once a week, then I'll cap it at 25. But let's say if I get a student that I'm, I'm only seeing or um maybe like every other week um then I can go up to 30 so it just kind of depends on what you know what clients I have and different things of that nature so the range is about 25 to 30 and no ma'am I'm not at the cap yet okay um that sounds great um another question is with all the academic and social pressures of high school how can parents help if the child start is starting to feel stressed yes so one of the biggest things is what I was saying that I have been seeing, especially um, after COVID, not after COVID because we're still kind of in it, but just during COVID and now um, is the anxiety of high school students rising. So one thing that parents can do to help alleviate some of that stress is just kind of listening, active listening to their uh, kids and also just, just providing that support because a lot of times um, one of the biggest things that I hear is that students feel as if their parents are pressuring them to do all of these things and not necessarily providing that support for them. So just kind of providing a listening ear and then just additional support for their child or students. Um, another quote, you may have answered this, but you talked about insurance. Do you accept most commercial insurances? Yes, ma'am. So we accept, um, yeah, we accept most insurance, but I can't really speak to that just because I'm not on the insurance side. I just send it over to our care team and they handle it. But from what I've seen, we do accept um, most insurance. And if we don't accept it, so let's say if a family has a private insurance, the good thing about the school-based program is that we are under a grant. So we're able to still see that family, even with their private insurance. So, okay. And then um, I think the last one here from the earlier questions is if okay. you already have a child in therapy, what, how would this be of additional help to them, do you think? So I've had that question a lot just because um, some of the students that Ms. Brown did want to refer to me when we reached out to the parents, um, they were already in therapy. So that is kind of why I was kind of trying to create a group um of students so they are still able to go through different groups small groups that I'm putting on so that's one way that I could provide additional support and I'm able to sit in on um, any additional meetings um at the school for that student just kind of offer that support as well okay I think that wraps up all the questions we had like I said early on does anyone else have anything they would like to put in the chat Oh, okay. Here's something. Oh, okay. There's a couple more I didn't notice. I had to scroll down further. Sorry. Okay. Um, what are some of the, I think you kind of answered this, but what are some of the issues our children are struggling with? You did kind of answer this, but mm -hmm. if there's anything to so add. I was just going to say, like I said, the top 
three right now, and that's kind of what I've been seeing within my caseload, is anxiety, um, depression, mild, moderate depression, um, and then a lot of grief, grief and loss that, that kind of has been creeping up as well. So just anxiety, just in general, has um, been a high, been on high alert when it comes to a lot of students at Druid Hills. Okay, I think that was it for the early questions. Okay. Does anyone else have any other questions? Um, here's another one that came in. Can you assist the student peer counselors in working with their peers? Um, can you give me a little bit more information? I'm not sure about that. Um, their peer counselors at Drill Hills, I, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I'm not sure about that either. Okay. Um, so we'll see if- uh, So I know. will say- Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. All right, I, I'm just in the car. My apologies, <laughs> taking my phone home from PT. I just, I think I had read some of that um, this year that there, there's going to be a peer counseling group. And okay. that just kind of resonated with me because I did that as I was a peer counselor when I was in high school. And I think it's a great program. And I just, I wondered if some of your expertise could be lent to the kids who are, you know, who are volunteering to work with some of their younger peers. I just thought you might have some really great insight for them things to look out for and that kind of thing. Right, so thank you for bringing that to my attention. I wasn't made aware of it, but I definitely will talk to Ms. Brown about it because I um, could definitely offer some support for that program, definitely, definitely. That sounds awesome, thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you for bringing it up. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, okay. Okay, I think that. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any other questions before I turn it back over to Ms. Valerie? All right. And if you do have any questions um, that may come up later, that's my email that's in the chat. So just feel free to send me an email. So thank you all for letting me present to you all today. Thank you very much. And I just wanted to say, you know, thank you to all the parents who helped support this initiative. It's a really important initiative, and we're really grateful we're, we're, we are allowed and we can offer these services this year. We know our, our, the mental health of our students is not always in good shape and um, really excited to have this service. So thank you to all the parents who helped as well. Okay, well, with that, if there's nothing else, um, you can all have the rest of your evening back. And thank you again, Africa, for reaching out to us and helping us with this meeting. Yes, you're more than welcome. Y'all have a good evening. Bye everyone. Thank you.